Today on Stock Charts in Focus, we're discussing the most important chart that you have on Stock Charts. That's your default. We're going to talk about what the default chart is, why it's so important, and of course, show you how to set that for your account. We're going to do this in Sharp Charts, we're going to do this in ACP. Chart Style is one of the most important tools on the site, and the default chart is your go to chart. So, lots to cover with that all important tool. Plus, some exciting news, my new book is out. We've got our latest edition of Trading for Dummies just released, it's on its way to you. You can go pick up your copy today. We're gonna talk about the book a little bit, plus you are getting a special 20% discount on your Stock Charts membership if you buy a copy and you look inside. So, it's all new, it's all here, it's Stock Charts in Focus. All right, my friends, welcome to the show, Stock Charts in Focus, of course, our product focus show here on the channel, where we dig into the site, dive into the tools, show you around the features, and ultimately help you get more value out of Stock Charts. That's our mission here every Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern time up on the live channel, also up on our YouTube channel after that, and the on-demand platform at stockchartstv.com. Lots of ways to watch. My name is Grayson Rose, Vice President of Operations here at stockcharts.com. As always, wonderful to be back with you for another episode, an important one today. One of the first, most important, most crucial things that you can do as a Stock Charts member is set up your charts exactly the way that you want them, save those chart templates for future use, and most importantly, set your default chart. We're gonna talk more about that on the show today. Make sure that you know what the default chart is, why it's so important, and how to set that up for your own account. Again, we're gonna do that in Sharp Charts then we'll jump over to ACP, our advanced charting platform, show you how easy it is to do that over in ACP as well. So before we jump into that, I do have some exciting news, a little bit of news on uh, kind of a personal note, but also something that you get to take with you as well. My latest book, Trading for Dummies, our fifth edition now, the new edition just released for this year is finally here. The book is uh, is now out. It's available pretty much everywhere that you can find your books, of course, Amazon and all the uh, the places online, but also available in the Stock Charts store. So here it is, Trading for Dummies, the fifth edition. Now the exciting thing about this, it's uh, A, written by me, and I have packed the book full of stock charts, tips, and tricks. We'll talk about that in just a second. But you know, every time I go through this book, every time I look back at it, I realize how awesome it is as just kind of a, an overall synopsis of how markets work, what you need to be thinking about as a trader or as an investor. The title is Trading for Dummies, but realistically, even if you're a long-term investor, this book still has a ton of value for you. So every time that I look back at this thing, I'm, uh, I'm actually pretty blown away by all the content that we stuffed into here and how great it is. So very, very excited about uh, what we packed into this latest edition. It's been totally updated. It's been a couple of years since we, uh, since we last updated this. 2017, I believe, was the last time we did a new edition of Trading for Dummies. So totally updated with new charts, new examples, even some new asset classes, things like cryptocurrencies that weren't quite as big in 2017, now a feature of this book. So tons and tons in here. Now the cool part is that since I wrote it and I also work at Stock Charts, I have, like I said, packed this full of tips and tricks and shortcuts, ways to get more out of Stock Charts. So not only is this gonna help make you a better trader, a better investor, a better market analyst, it's also gonna help make you a better Stock Charts user. This book is actually gonna help you get a lot of value out of Stock Charts. So very, very excited about that. If you pick up a copy, if you're a Stock Charts user, it's gonna help you in your trading, help you in your investing, but also help you in your use of the website, your chart setups, things like what we're talking about today. You know, what is your default chart? Well, this is the type of book that's gonna help you answer those questions. So definitely gonna help you get more value out of stock charts. If you are a stock charts user, this is a great one to pick up. Again, available now on Amazon, of course, and all of the, uh, the online retailers, but also available in the stock charts store. So you've got a link to that in the top right corner 
I'll show you uh, show you where to get to that. But the top right corner of pretty much every page, there is a link to our store, but also store.stockcharts.com. That's the link where you can go and you'll be able to find the new edition of Trading for Dummies. The great thing too, we stuffed a secret discount code in the book. So if you're new to stock charts and you're signing up for membership for the first time, you can actually get 20% off that membership when you sign up. If you're an existing member and you wanna refresh around the markets, you wanna refresh around charting and trading and strategies and all that, and you want 20% off, you can also pick up a copy, look for that secret discount code, kind of towards the front of the book, I'll tell you that. Uh, that secret discount code gonna give you 20% off your stock chart subscription. So the book really actually does kind of pay for itself when you think about it that way. If you, uh, if you use that 20% off coupon towards your stock chart subscription, it's actually gonna pay for itself. So very, very cool. That is Trading for Dummies, our fifth edition. Very, very excited to have this out. Very excited to share it with you all. Hopefully you go pick up a copy today. Uh, one quick note, if you do buy it from the Stock Charts store, it's gonna ship in uh, about a week. So we, uh, it is literally hot off the presses, just released, I believe it was yesterday. Um, so very, very new. So this is gonna ship very, very soon. It's not gonna ship today if you go, uh, go buy one, uh, but will ship in uh, very, very early April. So Trading for Dummies, fifth edition. Excited to share it with you. And let me know what you think. If, uh, if any of you are following the show, you pick up a copy, you, uh, you give it a read, let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the book, uh, what we did well, even what we didn't do well, anything that we missed, all of that good stuff. I love, uh, love that kind of uh, feedback and input and all of that. So Trading for Dummies 5th Edition, now available. So with that out of the way, let's jump over to the charts. We're talking about you know creating your own charts and trading for dummies. Today, we're gonna to talk about the default chart, the most important decision that you can make on stock charts, possibly, is what's your default chart. It is the one that you have as your go-to for your account. You're gonna see that on the show today. So let's jump over to the site, and get going. All right, everyone, so we are starting on the Sharp Charts workbench. By the way, here is that link to the stock charts store up in the top right corner of pretty much any page around the site. You can hit that, jump over to store.stockcharts.com. Starting on the Sharp Charts workbench though, the first thing that we need to talk about is what is a chart style? If you're gonna set up your default chart style, the first thing you need to understand is what a chart style actually is. Now, you could think about this instead of thinking about the, uh, the stock charts lingo chart style, that's our name for it. Think about it as a chart template. Everything that I've set up on this chart is part of a chart style. It's part of the chart template. So when I go ahead and I load in a different symbol, let's say I load in ADI, I'll give that X a click. If I load in ADI, you can see that this chart looks exactly the same, but with a different ticker symbol. I've got the same color scheme, I've got the same full quote turned on uh, up at the top of the chart. I've got my price relative line in percentage terms right up here. I've got my moving averages, volume bars, candlesticks, all of that. Everything that's, uh, that's sort of contained, all of the settings that I've set up down here at the bottom of the workbench, those get saved as a chart template that I can return to. And we call those chart templates chart styles because chart template sounded a little boring when we created it. So you can create tons and tons of different chart styles for your account. And we also have things like our sample chart gallery, which you can find from the free charts page. Go up here, hit uh, charts and tools. Uh, look for that sample chart gallery. That's gonna give you tons and tons of different options. Maybe we'll show that off at the end of the show. Uh, but point is there are a zillion, probably an infinite number basically, uh, of different ways to customize your charts, save those templates and come back to them in the future. So if I open up this menu here on the left, you can see these are all of my saved chart styles in my account. We've talked about this concept on the show in the past many, many times. Very, very important, very crucial part of Stock Charts membership. When you are a member, you get access to saving. You can save things to your account, and the first thing you're gonna to wanna to save is your chart templates. So that covers kind of what a chart style is. Now, there's one chart style in particular that is almost more important than the rest. And that's what we call the default chart style. So as you're going through stock charts, whenever you're on, well, let's jump over to that uh, that charts and tools page. You come to stock charts for the first time and you wanna pull up a symbol like Broadcom, you come up to this box at the top and you type in that ticker symbol. When I hit go, 
what's gonna load is my default chart style, my default chart template. So we can see it's gonna load the chart that we were just looking at because we've uh, we've obviously started with my default. But if I'm you know looking at a different chart, let's say I'm looking at something crazy like our scooter chart, this one looks a little bit different, kind of similar. You know, I'm on the workbench, I'm looking at this chart, I navigate away, maybe I jump over to Stock Charts TV, and then I come back to the workbench, I'm back on a different page, typing in a symbol at the top in that box, you can see that I'm gonna come back to my default chart style. So this is the one that's gonna load every time you load the, uh, the Sharp Charts page for the very first time. But that's not where it ends. It's also the one that's gonna load, uh, gonna, gonna be used actually, uh, when you create a new chart list. So if you go over to your account, you create a new chart list and you fill it in with a whole bunch of symbols, those symbols are gonna be saved with your default chart style until you go and customize each one individually. So if I'm, for instance, on the dashboard, I navigate down to chart lists. This is where you can save symbols, save charts, organize everything. We've talked about that on the show many, many times. If I create a new chart list, for instance, let's do uh, testing, ooh, testing on air. We'll give it some little stars so it stays up top. We create a new chart list, let's say, and then we go in here and we add some symbols. Let's add all of the symbols from, for instance, the S&P 100. We'll hit add charts. You can see that's now gonna take all of those symbols from the S&P 100, it's gonna put those in this chart list. And if I view that, for instance, in chart list view, you'll see that those symbols have all been saved, again, with that chart that we were just looking at, that template, that default chart style. So you can see the default chart style gets used in a whole bunch of different places. Now, the same thing is gonna happen when you run, for instance, a scan. If we come up here and we run a scan, let's say new 52 week highs in the S&P 1500. Let's see if we have any of those today. There we go. We've got a couple of symbols making new 52 week highs in the S&P 1500. If I now save these to a chart list in my account, let's just do a new chart list to make it easy. You can see the same thing is gonna happen. I've got those symbols saved into a chart list now. And if I pull that into chart list view, you can see the default chart gets loaded with those. Same thing is gonna happen for alerts. If we have alert results and we're looking at those, if we have scheduled scans that run, uh, anytime we click on a link, basically anytime uh, we're on stock charts, we click on a link and we load a chart of that symbol, it's gonna load with the default. So point is, it is an incredibly important thing to, uh, to set up what your default chart style is. For instance, if we go back to our, let's say our sector summary page, and we drill into the sectors, maybe we drill into utilities, we click into conventional electricity, and we pull up one of these, I don't know, Portland General Electric. You can see that now, that link that I've just clicked, again, gonna pull up with that default chart. So that kind of gets us back to the workbench, but as you can see, that default chart style, very, very important. It is used all over the place. So your first task, once you've created a couple of chart styles, you've saved those templates into your account, your first task is gonna be, what's the most important chart that I wanna look at? What's kind of my classic uh, chart layout, my set of tools that I wanna have as my, uh, my kind of go-to? That's gonna be your default. And the way that you're gonna save that or set that here on the Sharp Charts Workbench, you've actually got two different options. Easiest one, set up all the settings that you want, and then look for this little button right here that says save as default. Couldn't be easier. You give that a click and that is gonna save this charts, all of these chart settings, this whole chart template. It's gonna save that as your default. Now you can also use this to update what your default is. So if you make a modification to it, maybe you change a moving average color, you add an indicator, anything like that, you can come right here to the workbench and again, click that save as default button. If you've got a specific chart style from your account that you wanna set as the default, very, very easy. We can just pop that in right here. So let's say we wanted a weekly chart. If you're paying attention really, really close, you can see this is now a weekly chart instead of a daily. Let's say I wanted to make this my default. We've got RSI down at the bottom there. Makes it a little clear that this is a different chart. We select that from the menu and then we hit save as default. So simple, simple, simple. 
couldn't be easier. Uh, give that button a click. That's going to set this as your default chart style. Now, the other way that you can do this from the Sharp Charts Workbench, I mentioned that there are two, is open up that menu that we had at the very beginning of the show. So if we give that little icon a click, that little arrow up at the top, this opens a sidebar over on the left side of the Sharp Charts Workbench that has all of your chart styles saved into it. Also has some predefined chart styles at the bottom. Now this is a great way to uh, to actually kind of get ideas for uh, for different charts. You can see uh, some of our different contributors in there. For instance, Tom Boley or Chip Anderson, John Murphy. We've got a whole bunch of uh, predefined ones at the bottom. Uh, but this also shows you all of your saved chart styles. Now this little separator is uh, is style buttons, which gives you quick access to any of those styles. That's what these little things are. We'll save that for another show. But the point is you can set your default from within this menu. To do so, you're gonna look for this little edit button at the top, hit edit, and then you're gonna check whichever one you want to be your default. Now we can see that my default is set to that chart that we've been looking at from uh, sort of the beginning of the show. And once that is set as your default, it's gonna be indicated there with a nice clear little label that says default couldn't be easier. If you wanted to change it though, again, if we wanted to set, for instance, the uh, that weekly style that we're looking at, if we wanted to set that as our default, hover over that little check mark for any of the chart styles that you have saved into your account, you can see that that little tooltip is gonna pop up, says set as default, and you can give that a click, that is gonna move your default over to that chart style. You can see it's, uh, it's really, really easy, just moves that right over in one click. By the way, if you wanna delete any of your chart styles, you can do that from right here. And if you wanna assign any of your style buttons, you can click and drag on any of these to actually move them up. So anything that you drag up here is gonna become a style button. Uh, you get, uh, I believe it's 12 of those. So anyways, setting your default from this menu, very, very easy. Just give that little check mark a click and that assigns it. You can actually move it around uh, pretty easily. When you're done, just close that back down. So the default, we've talked about what a chart style is. We've talked about why the default is important, some of the places that it gets used. And now we've seen how to set that here in Sharp Charts. Again, pretty easy, pretty straightforward, but incredibly important. This is gonna be the chart that you see most frequently as a stock charts user. So hopefully this has helped you see, uh, again, kind of what that default is and how to create it. Now. We're gonna jump over to ACP. I wanna show you how to do this over there. It's very, very easy, kind of similar to that sidebar view that we just looked at here in Sharp Charts. Before we do that, let me just give you a quick highlight. We're gonna take a brief pause. I'm gonna jump back to that Charts and Tools page, and we are gonna take a look at, uh, at the sample chart gallery. Because if you're saying to yourself, man, I don't really know what, uh, what kind of default settings I'm gonna want, what should mine be? Sample Chart Gallery is for you. So let's jump over there and take a look. So to get to our sample chart gallery, we're gonna navigate over to the charts and tools page where we were before. We're gonna scroll down a little bit and we're gonna look for sample chart gallery, middle of the page under that member tools section. You do also have a link to that over on the right side in that sidebar, depending on the uh, sort of the width of the page. If you hit that though, you can jump into our sample chart gallery we brought this out uh, just a couple of months ago. I love this thing and uh, our team has been expanding it pretty much every week. Dave Keller and I have been throwing ideas out there. Julius DeKempenar has thrown out a couple as well. Uh, we've reached out to a number of our other contributors to say, hey, if you got ideas for great charts, uh, throw them in here. But as you can see, there are a ton of chart styles in here that you can browse and start to use in just one click. We've got tons and tons of different sections to this page. You've got breadth charts, you've got bond charts, you got volatility charts, economic indicators, fundamentals. And as we saw up top, we've even got things like an expert section, kind of like we had there in that uh, predefined chart styles menu that we looked at briefly on the Sharp Charts Workbench. So for instance, if you like Dave Keller's charts, well, you can preview what that looks like and then just hit that big blue button at the bottom to open up that chart in the Sharp Charts Workbench. From there, you can actually create your own chart style from it. So in my case, if you uh, if you actually click on my chart, you can see this is uh, basically the chart that we were just looking at as my default. Now this does have RSI down at the bottom. Uh, I've added that into the uh, the sample gallery one. 
Uh, but if you like my chart style, you can also get it here in the sample chart gallery. So lots to see here. It's a great tool and it's a great way to get ideas about other charts that you might wanna try using. We've got simple, simple things like candlesticks and OHLC bars, just basic stripped out charts. We've also got more advanced things like relative strength analysis. This is gonna give you a couple of different looks at, uh, at relative strength all on the same chart. So there's a ton in here, lots to explore, and most importantly, it's continuing to grow. So if you visited this, let's say a month ago, two months ago, there's new stuff in here that you can go explore. Again, we've been updating this uh, every, uh, every couple of weeks, we've been throwing new charts in here and it's only gonna continue to grow. So very, very cool. Remember our sample chart gallery is available for you as a great resource. So with that, in our last couple minutes of the show, Let's jump over to ACP and take a look at how to set your default chart style over there. Now I've cheated a little bit. I've got ACP open in a separate tab. So here we are. We've jumped over to our advanced charting platform. Now we've talked about this a ton on the show. Many of you are, uh, are ACP users. Many of you have seen this platform uh, before and are uh, totally well versed in how it works. But quick background, interactive, dynamic. You can move through time. You can scroll your charts back and forth. You can do great things like manipulating the uh, the scales uh, just by sort of clicking and dragging. And you can even move your indicators around simply by clicking and dragging. So if you want that down at the bottom, well, there you go. Just drag it down to the bottom. So again, ACP, a lot of interactivity, a lot of uh, sort of dynamic movements. Very, very cool what you can do here. The idea behind ACP though, is you have kind of everything in one platform. So you've got obviously your charts, but you've obviously also got lists, you've got scans, you've got uh, alerts that show up in here, lots that you can do. But you're still gonna have a default chart style in ACP. And just like we showed with Sharp Charts, that's gonna be kind of the first one that loads when you bring up ACP. It's also gonna be the chart style that's used when you create a new chart list in ACP and you fill it in with some symbols. So if you come here, you click create new chart list, you do the same kinds of things, create a new chart list here in ACP and fill it in with some symbols, the default is gonna be the one that gets used. If you run scans in ACP, here's that new 52 week highs in the S&P 1500. You can run a scan here in ACP uh, and you can save those to a chart list just like we did before. Same concept, the default chart is what is gonna come up. The one little difference is that ACP is gonna load uh, symbols that you click with whatever the chart in the middle of the screen is. So if we navigate over to our chart styles menu on the left side of the screen, and we pull up something wacky like our electric blue sample chart, you can see that now when I click things in this uh, these scan results, it's basically gonna take whatever chart template I have on the screen and use those. So a little bit more flexibility here built into ACP. You have a little bit more control over kind of what you're gonna see. Again, because everything is all in one platform. You're not navigating from page to page like the rest of the website. But the uh, the default still incredibly important. So the way that you uh, you set this up first and foremost here in ACP, the little paintbrush icon over on the left side of the screen, there's a big green button down at the bottom that lets you save chart styles. You can hit save chart style once you've set your settings up with everything that you want. You can either save as new, or if you actually wanna go sort of update an existing chart style, you have that option. You can select one from the menu, or if you're saving as new, you set a name, you hit the big green button to save it, and that's gonna save that setting, uh, that set of settings, that chart template to your account. Now, once you've set up all of your uh, custom chart styles, they're gonna show up here at the top of the menu under your styles. So this is a long list of all the styles that I've created for ACP. We've got things like the uh, the scooter chart. It's kind of one that we looked at before. So here's that scooter chart now in ACP. And of course, I've got things like my, uh, my default that I use in Sharp Charts and in ACP. They look very, very similar, as you can see. Setting the default here in, in ACP is very, very easy. You've got all of your styles, and kind of just like we did with that menu that popped out from the side of the screen in Sharp Charts, to set your default, you're gonna hover over it, and you're gonna hit the little star. Now you can edit, you can delete, or you can save as default 
uh, your any of your chart styles in this list. The one that you have set as your default is always gonna show that little star in yellow. So if I wanna move this around, again, just like we did before, let's say I wanna make that weekly chart my default here in ACP. Well, I just hover over that. You can see that that star has now moved. I get a little success message that uh, that fades away in just a second. Uh, so that star has now moved down. If I wanna move it back, all I do is hover over that one, hit the star, and there we go. Now I'm back to uh, the default as that uh, daily chart that we've been looking at. So very, very easy to set your default here in ACP. Just make sure that the one that is starred in this Your Styles menu is the one that you want. Now, one other thing, we talked about the sample chart gallery. You can use that in Sharp Charts. We've also built a lot of sample charts in here under uh, those different groups uh, in ACP in that Chart Styles menu. So things like experts, we got a long list of experts and you can click on any of these to get a chart uh, that's kind of based on that uh, on that user. So if you want, for instance, Julius de Kempinar's uh, sort of default chart that he likes to use in ACP, just open up that group, click his name, and that's gonna open up his uh, his sample chart style. So this is sort of uh, the ACP version, if you will, of that sample chart gallery. Now, you can still uh, save those sample charts from the Sharp Charts world into a chart list and kind of pull them into ACP, uh, but we are gonna continue to expand this uh, sort of sample area under the, uh, the chart styles menu here in ACP. So nice little trick, just like to remind people of that. So that is our show for today. I wanna to thank you so much for joining me on the show. Hopefully you've had some fun thinking about your default chart template. Think about those settings that you wanna use, the indicators, the tools that are most important to you. Even things like color scheme and what color do you want your moving averages to be? And do you want the full quote open or closed? All of those things get bundled up, packaged into one of those chart templates that you can save as a chart style. And the one that's most important to you, the one that you want to be your go-to, you can make that your default. Very, very easy in Sharp Charts and in ACP, but incredibly important. Well, again, one of the most important charts that you can set up in your Stock Charts account. So, as always, we've had some fun looking at tools, features, helping you get more value out of Stock Charts. Speaking of more value out of Stock Charts, don't forget, Trading for Dummies, now available. Go pick up your copy in the Stock Charts store. Not only gonna help you uh, become a better, sharper trader and, uh, and chart analyst, but also gonna help you get more value out of Stock Charts, which you know I love. So hopefully you go pick up your copy of Trading for Dummies, now available everywhere you buy your books, but especially at store.stockcharts.com. Again, my name is Grayson Rose, Vice President of Operations here at Stock Charts. It's been wonderful to be with you. I'll be back for another episode next week, so I'll see you then. But until then, chart on, my friends. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment, and if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.